Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam, I wish to clarify uh, a few points. First of all, uh, the reason why I decided to focus my speech on construct constructive politics because I thought that was an important issue that we should look at. As what I say in my speech, Singapore is becoming uh, more diversified. There will be different views. Um, and moving forward, how the government would deal and co accommodate different views and different perspective of Singapore is important for us to move forward together as one united people. And the other MPs from the Workers' Party will be talking about uh, different issues. Uh, it would, they will cover, I mean, uh, ranging from social issues, social safety net, to foreign affairs, national security. They will cover the full range of areas. And they, by we speak our job, our focus on constructive politics, uh, I thought it was an important uh, issue. And of course, it's important to also understand what is the perspective of the PAP in terms of constructive politics. And from what the Prime Minister has said, it seems to me that uh, it is more constructive dictator on the term of the PAP rather than constructive politics in terms of the society that is moving forward. Uh, and I have affirmed my uh, endorsement to what uh, the President has said, that we should look at the outcome of constructive politics. That is, that we should be able to move forward together despite the differences. Um, next, is talking about uh, the workers' public pick topping on foreign workers' issue. I say again, I don't think we have big plot. I have explained in this house of some misunderstanding of the speeches that had made. Uh, and in any case, I also noted that when the PAP have to uh, make a policy U-turn, they call it policy shift. I don't know whether that is a shift or is a people. Madam Speaker, I think the record will speak for itself. When we make a shift, we acknowledge a shift. When the Workers' Party changes position, they pretend they haven't. That is a difference. Now, as for delegating responsibility for different parts of the budget speech to different MPs, that's entirely within Mr. Lotia Kyang's prerogative, it's not for me to suggest how he should conduct his affairs in the Workers' Party. But as a leader, you do have a responsibility to state where does the party stand on the big issue. Somebody can take out, look after health care. Somebody can take care of transport. Somebody can spend all his time marking Minister Heng Sui Kiat on education. But where do you stand on what the government is doing? Is the government doing right? Is it doing wrong? Do you agree with the government? Do you have a better view? Or do you abstain? Or do you abstain from abstaining? Mr. Lutiakan. Well, um, I think our position is quite clear on many of these issues. If the Prime Minister wanted my view on what the government has been doing and whether he has done well, I'll say, well, he has solved some of the problems, is what the Prime Minister has mentioned. And uh, the Workers' Party MP also acknowledged this in their speech, but also pointed out there are things that is still work in progress and, and the, the government will have to focus on and to make it better and to improve. So that is uh, the position, and uh, I don't see the need for me to uh, totally sum up. I think the MPs will be able to do in their own view and to give their view and their assessment, and at the same time, wherever possible, offer certain views and alternative suggestions to improve the policies. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm very grateful for the extremely reasonable explanation from the member. I hope he takes an equally reasonable approach when he comes to election rallies 
because the Workers' Party approach has been to be extremely reasonable, indeed low profile in Parliament, but come election time to turn into tigers and heroes. <laughs> Madam Speaker, I thank the Prime Minister for uh, uh, praising the Workers' Party's ability to fight in the elections. We, we have no intention to hide ourselves in Parliament. We seek the mandate for people to come to Parliament to check against the government, and we have done it honestly and sincerely. We have not turned this place into, uh, into a theatre. That shows we are responsible. Uh, and we will behave continuously as a rational and responsible party. And if members would, I believe members will agree that the Workers' Party has been rational. We have not come here with some uh, war policies or war suggestions. We debate the policies. We came up with some suggestions. But these are not bankrupting the government coffer or suggesting to use a reserve. Uh, election. I think we are also rational. We, we don't accuse the PAP uh, of um, something that we cannot substantiate. Or I know we get sued. <laughs> um, so, so I think we are fair. And election is elections. And I thank the Minister for Prime Minister for noting that we can fight election. I'm sure the PAP can do. You are the government and uh, you have been uh, the governing party for 50 years, and you've got more, much people, talented people than the Workers' Party. How can you say that we are tiger and we are something else in Parliament? I'm sure the PAP can equally be Tiger Alliance. It's an eloquent explanation for why the Workers' Party has been inarticulate <laughs> about many things. In a serious parliament, the government presents its policies, the opposition presents its alternatives. The Workers' Party may not have alternatives on every issue. You may not have a full range of all the complexities of designing an HDB scheme or a MediShield scheme. You do have a responsibility to say, which direction are we going? And that direction has to be said clearly, not to explain to the PAP, but to explain to Singaporeans what you stand for. And what you stand for cannot be what the PAP is doing and a little bit better. That means you have no stand. Wherever the PAP is standing, ask them to do better. That's easy. I can do that too. But where do you stand? Where are we totally wrong? Where do you think this is a completely different way to do things better? Where do you think, in principle, we do not want Singapore to be like this. These are big issues which deserve to be debated and not elided over and avoided in the House. And that is what a First World Parliament should be about. Madam Speaker, again, I'd like to say that the Prime Minister is reasonable to say that the Workers' Party may not have come up, be able to come with all the alternative policy. That's true. Uh, but to say that the Workers' Party has no position on a major issue, that is not true. I think we did state our position in Parliament. We, debate, we debated uh, major policy vigorously, and we, we didn't oppose all the policies. But where we think that there is a need for us to oppose, and in concern the future of Singapore, like the population white paper, we did so. So we state our position on important issues. And we didn't oppose for things that we think are doing right. Is that not enough? I think it probably is useful to bring it down to something very specific. Let's come back to the population white paper. During the debate, the position taken by the Workers' Party is that enough is enough. Zero growth. We have continued to grow. I have not heard the Workers' Party demand zero growth today. Do you still demand that? Or do you now think that we should allow SMEs to survive in Singapore? We have made a calculation at a point in time of debating the population white paper. 
and that if you continue to allow the foreign workers to grow, we will, it will be untenable in the future generation, future uh, population growth. And thereby, we decided that we need to keep the population number in check. And one way of doing it, of course, is to freeze the foreign workers' growth in number. And our calculation was that probably between the existing number of the foreign worker, you can still move around with some sectors that may not need so much of foreign worker, and thereby you can still get by with the zero population, zero foreign workers growth. Uh, we understand perfectly the possibility and the trade-off. That is our position at that point in time. We have not objected subsequently or uh, grieved the government for why are not doing it, because that's our view that it should have zero population growth, but the government decided otherwise there's a way of doing it. We have said our piece, but we have to respect the decision of the government to move on. But our message has got across. We cannot sustain continuously the kind of population growth plan the government is uh, planning. And I'm glad to uh, hear today that you know, Prime Minister is saying that we are, the government is taking a very serious view of tightening and watching the growth of population. Hey, Madam Speaker, after all this complicated explanation, I don't know whether Mr. Lotiakyang still stands by what was said in Parliament in the White Paper debate last year. Because if he really does, after all the explanation, he should say, we have too many foreign workers now, send home 70,000. <coughs> then we will know where he stands. But after telling me that you can massage this and some people can do less and others can do, can, will need more, that's easy to say. Who's going to do the massaging? Of course, the government. And that is the mark of a substandard opposition. Madam Speaker, I disagree. This is not the mark of a substandard opposition. This is the mark of an op responsible opposition, not to jam up the government, allowing the government, after giving our view, debating it, allowing the government to move forward, not to jam up the government. So it is a mark of responsible government and a mark of First World Parliament. <laughs> Madam Speaker, we have to call a spade a spade. If you have changed the position and your previous position was wrong, say so. If you hold by your position, have your guts to re reaffirm it and take the consequences. But to weasel away, play with words, avoid the issue, and then claim to be responsible. That is what we fear can drive Singapore's politics into the same place where every, many other countries have gone.